again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thanks for tuning in again today. Um, I should take up your mantra and just go to a campaign outfit. <laughs> I go to put on this nice little jacket that I had and I put it on and there's a giant spot on it. I'm oh. like, what the heck is that? <laughs> I was so bummed and then like last minute scramble. You're like, no, this doesn't work. Ugh. I cannot lie. This fashion choice is working in my favor well, for the just next three easier. months. Uh, I, I, when I worked when I worked for Rand Paul a couple years back, that was easy too. I threw on I threw on you know some kind of pants or a skirt or something in my Rand T-shirt every day for you know like nine months. Yeah, and and I do you know circulate the T-shirts and you I do, do wear them. other things yeah. in between, but you know. Uh, I was thinking this morning, you know, people have always said with politics, I mean, you have one job and that's what people have to know, know who, who you are. are. And I was like, this is actually a really simple yep. way to do it. It helps. It's an, it um, gets the name out there, right? Yeah. And um, so, so primary day is a week from today. So the 8th of September um, is the primary for um, on both the Republican side and the Democrat side. There are... Here in Manchester, the Democrats have a lot of um, primary races in for state rep. Um, on the Republican side of the ballot, there's only one primary because we actually Mine. try not to have <laughs> primaries. I'm up, I've been warned. Because I, I, you know, and to this day, I, I'm still like, did uh, oh, is that Senate an accident? Oh no, that, we have one state rep primary. We have two Senate primaries. We can go back to that in a second. So in Ward 12, um, over there on the west side, there is a state rep primary for uh, the main district. So that would be Hillsborough 19, um, Jamie Brazil, Matt Whitlock, and Dick Marston are running, and there's only two seats available there. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, on the state Senate side, we have two primaries. Your race, which is just... District 20, that's yeah. Manchester Man and Boston. Yeah, and um, obviously you'll win that because you have been working at this for... The I last mean, I couple hope election so. cycles, um, and then there's a primary a giant over missed opportunity be I don't. <laughs> between uh, Ross Terrio, Alderman Ross Terrio, and George Lambert from um, Litchfield to run against Donna Susie in November. Uh, there are also um, some county primaries. I'm I don't I'm not sure how many on the Democrat side, but I know on the Republican side, there's um, Ed Sapienza, who's the current Register of Deeds, has a primary. Um, I believe the sheriff has a primary. A lot of the county races, not Tony Pappas. Tony Pappas does not have a primary, so congratulations, Tony, you win. <laughs> um, the interesting thing, I just, I'm reading an email right now. Hmm. Being that it's a week away, I found it interesting that um, some towns have put out guidelines for election day as to how it's going to work. I um, I don't remember. I think it was Sanborn. I'm gonna don't quote me on the towns. One town um, was saying they would not require masks of either the workers and volunteers or the voters. They were going to have shields, which I don't think is a crazy bad plan. You know fine um they were if you weren't comfortable they had there's this thing and this is from the secretary of state's office they have these private voting mats which i'm assuming are just a piece of paper right that you put you you, you put your ballot on that mat because you know somehow covid i don't know and then when you're done you fold it in half and you leave your ballot sticking out of it a little so that when you go to the machine, you can put it in and let it take it without touching it. So that's- How about you just act like a normal person and when you your, get home, wash, wash your, your hands. hands? Wash How your hands. How about that? Right. You know, look at this insanity. Did you see that the CDC revised their numbers? Well, I, I'm gonna say they, re they put out a thing. I don't know that they revised their numbers, but it still is a, um, it was very telling. Can I finish my sentence? Yes. So uh, for the folks back home, basically over the weekend, the CDC came out with some new numbers. So they took the number of deaths, mm -hmm. let's say for, for, you know, rounding numbers, 160,000 in America. Yep. And of those 160,000 people, uh, only 6% yep. died of specific only oh, COVID. Exactly. The 94% other people died of comorbidities, which, uh, you know, if you've been following the show, you know, include things like um, 
uh, respiratory issues, uh, diabetes, obesity, etc. So, and most of the people have been the elderly. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, when, when we've been spending the past three, four, five, six months telling you we think something else is happening because the reaction that is happening in society is not commiserative. Is that a word? Yeah. A commiserative? <laughs> With um, w the response is not in balance right. with what the numbers the don't numbers match the are. reaction in my and, opinion and and so you know just hearing something like oh we're going to do all this insane stuff Oh, please stop. You know, it's just, well, it's, it's, I mean, it's, we have to have a rally tonight at right. City Hall. They, so tonight, being Tuesday, uh, the aldermen are voting. <laughs> um, first, there was um, there's a, the Committee on Administration and Information Systems. That's the subcommittee. Um, they're going to take under consideration a proposal for a change to the city ordinance made, from what I understand, by the health director. We'll come back to that which would require face people wear ma masks um it's just there's so many words here it would be uh members of the public must wear face covering over their nose and mouth so not just in, now now we're saying which which things at all times when entering any public or government controlled building or enclosed environment except for when the person can safely maintain a distance of six feet or greater from all other persons located therein. This includes, but is not limited to, work sites, schools, and government buildings. This provision shall not apply when a member of the public is entering any building designated as a polling place or any building entered for the purpose of casting a vote in public or in governmental elections. Um, members of the public entering or exiting a restaurant for the purpose of purchasing food, picking up takeout, or any other pur purpose must wear a face covering covering their mouth and nose. Members of the public dining in a restaurant don't need to do that while they're seated at their table because we all know that COVID only likes people when they're standing. Um, persons at places of indoor amusement and social gatherings included but not limited to bingo halls, bowling alleys, charitable gaming facilities, social clubs, service clubs, or similar places where food and drink is a sec served secondarily to the main activity may remove face coverings while actually engaged in eating or drinking, but not at other times. Social gatherings at private residences are exempt, notwithstanding this order. At private residences are exempt. Thank we you for saying, say right. anything more, you know, this is insanity. Well, and so- I don't even want to listen to the rest of and, that word. Well, that was, pretty, that was pretty much it. Um, 10 years and older, um, the Manchester recognized blah, 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 at the discretion of the parent or legal guardian if the children is less than two. Um, what is concerning is they're saying if you have, um, if you have, a, a, can show that a licensed medical professional has advised that wearing face coverings may pose a, rect, uh, a risk to you, which that in itself is going to cause a lawsuit because somebody's going to say, I have a medical exemption. And so, what? the cop is going to say, you're going to have to show me a note from your doctor. I, that's what HIPAA prevents. That's what HIPAA laws are about. You don't have to disclose your medical, private medical information to other people. But, um, not, but you know, we don't really have rule of law anymore. Well, I just, don't even, you know, it's so, just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Where what I at. find perplexing, truly perplexing, is that this is bring, coming up now six months into this, virus i mean we both a, wore masks at the start yes, we, didn't like, come we were in. like i'm not anti-mask because the, i'm like crazy or anti-science or conspiracy theory I just or don't. any of that i'm like if there was a legitimate health and medical reason to do it we would do it but so there isn't you can go out so why are to, we doing this you now? can go to manchesternh.gov and you can search click on the covid updates and there's a daily update that gets updated in the morning for the day prior obviously so updated yesterday there are a total of 23 positive cases in the entire city of manchester where we have more than 112,000 people that means that we are at you know two one hundredths of one percent of our population here in manchester um currently has covid two of them are in long-term care facilities um that we haven't had uh um, we have i think it's we have zero people in Manchester, zero Manchester residents currently hospitalized. 
and there are only six people hospitalized across the entire state. There are, there are, um, we have the people dying. I mean, I'm not making light of people dying. Don't get me wrong, but it's pretty sparse. There's one here and then every once in a while there's one there and almost always they are definitely 70 years and older or they're in long-term care facilities. So the, the general public, the people watching the show from home, Carla, myself, everybody that's living in their lives aren't getting COVID in Manchester. I don't know what's happening in Texas. I don't care what's happening in Florida. I don't care about the other places. The numbers in Manchester are better than in the rest of the state. Let that sink in. The densely, most densely populated city in the state has a better trajectory than the entire state has. And today is when Anna Thomas is going to try to convince aldermen that there should be a thousand dollar fine, a one thousand dollar fine, if you should happen to go pick up takeout food from a local restaurant and not put on a mask. So can we talk about why a thousand dollars? Where did they come up with that number? I have number? no idea. Because other cities like Concord, Concord. have a fifteen dollar one. Right, and there, they specifically they... said their goal in Concord, which I don't think is necessary there either, is education. They want people to be wearing masks because they are caught up in the, you know. I mean, two, but one... who is this one I'm... person in the entire place that has not heard about masks know. and COVID and, and all of it. So, um, and restaurants, and I mean, I go, I go out, I go to stores, I go to restaurants. I go to Market Basket, they have a sign up that says, you know, you have to wear a mask. I put a mask up. I go to, you know, I go out to eat. Maybe the place has a sign, maybe they don't. But that's, that's up to them. That's up to the private business to say, I just noticed down here in Margaritas, there's a sign that says anybody entering the premises must be wearing a mask. No mask, no service. That is their right. It is their private property. Um, but to say that the government now has to mandate that every restaurant refuse service. You know, and it also puts a really undue burden on our law enforcement, How are they quite frankly. Do, this? do they not have anything to do these days? Because I can tell you that I just watched three police officers, including, I believe, the deputy chief down on Elm Street. And I had, I stopped and asked somebody, I said, what's going on? It was down where I re so commonly refer to the lump of human being that lives in front of, you know, baked or whatever that is there. Um, well, apparently in town Manchester, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday sends their crew out to clean the sidewalks in that particular area, literally with high pressure water because they are disgustingly filthy. We, if we're going to talk about health hazards and community concerns for health, she, the woman I spoke to said it is disgusting. Like, that is a health concern. Um, today is Tuesday, not one of the days they normally do it. But the tenants in the building were taking pictures of the filth and the spread because that group of humans that live on that sidewalk who choose to live there. They do not want help from the city. They don't want to participate in any programs. They want to live in that spot. They used to live down in front of Bunnies. Oh, I remember. And you'll know that the guy who does the artwork, and I use that word lightly, in one day, he made $1,000. So the next time he's sitting there begging for money because he, woe is him, there was a day he made $1,000 sitting on that sidewalk, and he has no interest in leaving because he can make good money living on the sidewalk on Elm Street, making a mess for the patrons and the businesses that are involved. So they had actually have three police officers come. I guess they always have a police officer, but they needed more because there's a woman, one of the homeless women, screaming in the faces of people because they're cleaning the sidewalks. The guy who takes up residence there refuses to move his stuff. So I'm like, wait a minute. So. We have that problem. We have hypodermic needles people still report. We still do have a drug problem in Manchester. I will tell you, property crimes do not get investigated. If somebody breaks <laughs> into your shed, if somebody breaks into your car, if you any of these things that happen happen to you and you report them to the police, I will bet you a beer they will not be investigated. The police have and fire department have too much on their plate as far, you know, and we can debate whether I think there's a, I mean, decrease in fires, but then those people are sent out on other health. The fire department sent out on drug overdose. Do we really believe 
that the Manchester police and the Manchester Fire Department have nothing better to do than chase down people picking up takeout food in a restaurant without a mask. Because I don't. And then what's going to happen? So, okay, I go into, you know, Murphy's to pick up my wings to go, or I go into the farm and pick up something to go, and I don't have a mask, and somehow I get it stopped. So what are you going to do? You're going to find me $1,000? How are you going to get that $1,000 from somebody? What do you, I mean, what's the reason? What's the, you can't take away my pro house. Go ahead, try to put a lien on my property because I wouldn't wear a face mask. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. That'll just cost the taxpayers money and legal fees. You can't prohibit somebody from registering a vehicle because of something they did not related to their vehicle. So how exactly... But how do you even know any of that? Because we don't actually have a uh, rule of law anymore, well, I mean, right? Because we're I at agree. the stage where we have... Randomness. Uh, you know, we have His Excellency God King Sununu making, you know, orders over here. Uh, we have the health department saying that they can suspend the constitution. We have, so I don't know, maybe they could come take your well, house. Well, they, 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 they could, could try. You know, I'm just your, fairly, I'm fairly confident that I, even though like um, it would cost me money and legal fees, but at some point people are going to start filing lawsuits because they, oh, people you are have infringing. People filing lawsuits. What we need now is we need non-corrupt judges to actually enforce the law meaning the supreme law of this land, which is the Constitution of New Hampshire and of the United States. And all of this stuff that is going on is unconstitutional. So, you know, people used to get their knickers in a knot about, uh, you know, uh, Muslim countries that force mm -hmm. women to wear certain coverings in order to leave their homes. So can someone explain to me what is the difference between forcing people in the Middle East, women, to wear coverings for some reason, and we think that's wrong because you're making people do things they don't want to do. But here, now we're going to force you to do things you don't want well, to and, do. And it's so random. And, and none of it makes sense. And people will say, follow the science. You know what? I've been following the science from the start. I'm a smart person. I can read a graph. I can understand data. I know how viruses work. And I'm like, what we are being told is not accurate. There is some movement towards control and taking over control. And if this mass mandate passes, they're going to have trouble on their hands because there will be lawsuits. I'm sure there will there be. There will be strong civil disobedience. Well, and... People need to understand, you can't just suddenly say the city of Manchester now has the right to tell me what I need to wear in public. That is unacceptable. Well, and, and it's just, the timing's bizarre. I mean, the, if this was March, maybe, when we didn't know how whether this virus was going to spread, I mean, there, you know, it was supposed to overwhelm our medical. I mean, right now, every single person in the state that has COVID could go into the hospital and we still wouldn't be overwhelming our hospitals. That's there how few people have it. There was never any Not overwhelming here. of the hospitals in New Hampshire. No. There was never any need. In fact, lest we forget, we <laughs> had to furlough yes. hospital workers, doctors and nurses because of all the people. You know, I still don't know one person personally who's died of COVID, no. but I do personally know three people who have committed suicide. I know, I, I, I said that to somebody last months. week. I said, it is very concerning because I do look at the, the obituaries, because I get the union leader, you read it in real paper, I read it online, but I read the one that looks like the paper. And I always click on the obituaries, partially because, you know, you'd like to know if the guy down the street that you know died. You know. And I do see, of course, maybe they've always been there, but I do see random, like people that you no explanation, you know, not like died, died at, suddenly, no, died like at their home or, or just, you know, Joe Blow 43 died last Saturday. And you're like, mm, and there's no like give to the cancer society or, you know, it's enough that just enough. Um, so tonight, Tuesday, the first, the alderman at this subcommittee, presuming this subcommittee approves it because they, the subcommittee could, um, receive and file. And is uh, the subcommittee... I don't recall okay. off the top of my head. I know Sapienza is the chair, and I know Barbara Shaw is on that, and Barbara Shaw has said she will not support this. Um, I know that Elizabeth Moreau, uh, Joe Lavasser, Keith Hirschman, uh, Michael Porter have all said they will not support this. 
Thank um, you. Thank you. For... I do think it would be bizarre for Kevin Kavanaugh in particular to support this because he's on the reopening task force. So if he can substantiate the need for this extra thing, why wouldn't he have insisted that it happen at the state level if it's so bad? Well, I think to some extent, you know, I'm just putting on my uh, everyone's being nefarious hat for a hot, hot second here. Um, I think there is an interesting hot potato game that's happening here where everyone uh is that a is that a british thing do hot potato you, do no you, we played okay you, you know yeah. what, you know what i mean okay so where everyone's kind of going not my problem no. right so one of the things that um president trump did is he was like i'm going to devolve this down to the states as it should have been yeah. you know make america states again um you know, so it should have been on the state's level. Very smart, though, because now you've decentralized. Now we have our governors. Our governors have to make decisions, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I do think Governor Sununu did a hot potato move that is not really justified in terms of how, how it's supposed to work. New Hampshire is not a home rule state. Right. We These don't... towns should not be able to do things that are not passed legislatively. I know they're doing it under this sort of auspices health. of health, but I question, and I think, you know, as we come out of this, that we need to look very carefully at what kind of authority has been We're given to, to health who? people for what reason? Because once again, how does that suspend the Constitution? If no one's allowed to do it, how is this health officials suddenly allowed to do it, come on your property for a nuisance, you know, take you away, lock you up, give you a thousand dollar fine. Um, it doesn't make sense, right? So I think with this hot potato, uh, you know, we're going to see in the justice system, we're going to have to see, uh, you know, how and where this plays out. I do hope we get an honest judge at some stage who actually says, no, you know what, on the face of it, looking at it as a reasonable person should yeah. uh you know no we do not have nothing in this legislation has the authority to suspend the supreme law yeah, yeah. of the country um yeah so it's, we are doing this rally yeah we're gonna have a, have a bunch of people going down to city hall tonight i know a lot of people have been emailing the aldermen to voice their concerns about this ordinance um i did do you know if it's if we'll be able to testify? i have no idea i can't figure out what i never can keep up with what's open and what's not open i know um for instance i tried to get information because manchester since there's you know 112,000 people here where's our guideline on what's going to happen um you know, at the polling place right. so that people know beforehand, um, you know, like in the, like I was saying earlier in the town, um, they weren't, there was one town that wasn't going to require anybody to wear a mask, but they were going to have a tent outside that if you were uncomfortable entering the building without a mask, where, where people weren't wearing masks, you could go into this tent and vote absentee, which I thought was, that was, that's sufficient. So you're giving an option to the voter who is uncomfortable as opposed to mandating all voters do something. Um, so there is, I don't know. I, I honestly, I'm political and I do not know a week before the primary See, but what's going to be expected of me. Although you said that specifically excluded polling stations. It did. Because I originally was thinking that, but that doesn't oh, exclude maybe the these space towns outside. are doing, you know, these, these ordinances so that they can circumvent no. or, or enforce or, you know, try and enforce certain behavior at the polls but because that's i'm, I'm guessing that the secretary of state's office and the attorney general's office has probably already <laughs> said like, eh, you, can't limit, you can't limit voting you know and the thing that folks need to remember back home too you know it's fine for us to sit here and to be like oh i'm gonna sue oh i'm gonna do this oh you know but the point is we the taxpayer gets punished when our government does oversteps wrong. or does wrong or whatever, right? Because they claim that they're governing us by consent. I mean, I think at this stage it's pretty clear that's not really the case because, you know, if they think... So, riddle me this. So, everyone seems to agree bullying is bad, right? Yes. But what is the government other than the ultimate bully? And... Where it's becoming really, really clear to me is they are now forcing people to do things against their will, yeah. claiming it's for their own good, 
saying we are not allowed to have the right of conscience, we are not allowed to decide for ourselves no right or wrong what we as individuals want to do. So then the question is, who owns you? I know. Who owns you? Like if you are not allowed to say no to the people who say they only have power from being from your consent and if i say i no longer consent because i do not agree with what you're doing then where do we go from here i know i go to city hall at five o'clock yeah we're gonna head on down tonight it'll, it'll be interesting um I'm, I'm encouraging people bring pots and pans maybe we'll make some noise we're gonna have a microphone um encouraging people to come talk if you're running for office from so either side come stop if you we, want before we run out of time sim not similar just another thing because i do believe that some of this is all political intentionally political but anyways um we had trump rally here in manchester on friday it was really good i listened to the uh president's speech uh people were it always amazes me about the trump rallies because they always try to make it out that the trump supporters are the crazy people and it's you always completely calm and everybody's just enjoying themselves and there's never any ruckus right yeah. um on the flip side of that last um, Thursday down in D.C. was the Republican National Committee convention where they nom officially nominated the president for re-election. And you can Google uh, Google Chris Agar. That's A-G-E-R. He's one of the um, RNC members here from New Hampshire. Or Rand Paul. And um, look at the way uh, the protesters treat these people. There is no way this is accidental. There is no way this is organic. This is an orchestrated attempt to sway the minds of people who are not paying attention to the details and not keeping their eye on the ball. I mean, um, I will tell you how orchestrated it is. I don't know if it's a troll or not, but if you type in Antifa.com, oh go you go Biden to Harris. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's you website. Google's listening to us. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you, Google. So, uh, <laughs> so I guess that's what we have for today yeah. and the NSA. Who uh, make sure you, if you listening if, in. don't forget that next Tuesday is primary election day. Uh, get out there, vote for Matt Mayor Matt. Yeah, Matt Mayberry for um, congressional CD one. Um, I think he's the best choice in the race. Um, and don't forget, and don't to, forget vote to vote for, for Carla. Um, we'll see you next Tuesday. We're going to tape, even though it's election day. We're still going to tape. That's all we got. Bye guys, Bye. live free and drive.